Hello there. In this video, I want to show you how to use uh, MacStrategy's REST API Playground and how to contribute. So we host our Playground um, Postman platform. So go to postman.com slash MacStrategy SDK. In here, you will see uh, one workspace and two collections. These are two collections and one workspace. Let's go to the workspace. So this is our workspace. In the workspace, you'll see two collections. One of them is REST API. So this is served as the API doc. You can use this as an API doc. You can also run through the collections. Uh, I'll show you how to run it. And the second collection is a workflow. So you see, this is a grouped by functionalities. Each of the folder can be run. Uh, you can select folder and click run once you have this blocked. Uh, we also ship the two environments, so you can use the demo environment or this template. So if you create a cloud environment, you can um, fork this template and modify the URL and the password to test it. So let's, in order to run this, uh, you actually need to uh, either, you either um, download, either export the file and import to your project, or you can use a fork. So we recommend people to do a fork. So, so that way, if you can, if you want to contribute, you can actually create a PR. I'll show you how to do it. So let's first create a fork of this. I'm going to start from scratch, create a fork and uh, give it name, says Harris, okay. And put it somewhere. So in, in my private repository, right? I'm going to put this into my workspace, private workspace. Okay, create a fork. Uh, this will take uh, two minutes. Since this is huge, that this is very big. All right, so the fork is created. You see in my workspace, you see this. Um, this is the fork from. Uh, yeah, you see this icon. That means this is the fork. Okay, right, fork from Max Regis. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, I also want to fork the environment so I can run, so I can test it, right? So first I'm going to go to this uh, Max Regis uh, workspace. I'm going to also fork the demo environment so I can use the demo environment I can create a fork. This will be very quick. I'm going to create a label and put it in the same place. Okay, so fork environment. Now let's go to my workspace so this is my private workspace i'm going to select environment um, demo environment you see actually this demo environment we have a, a base url some other parameters those uh, variables will be used in script so you can um, put some value here and it will run through without uh, like much of copy paste okay so let's close this i'm going to try just try to do a few simple things and we'll have uh, more videos to talk about different functionalities. Let's do a uh, login. So I'm going to authenticate the user. So in this API, we're going to use the environment variable. You can see the body, right? User, name, password, and all from the environment variable. And after they finish, we're going to create an auth token, right? We're going to save this auth token in environment variable too. So this auth token will be shared, will be used by other script as well. So you don't need to copy paste this. So let's get, let's try. Uh, so I'm using demo environments. I'm using the uh, anonymous login. So it create auth token, right? So then I'm going to use it. So let's go to, let's, yeah, let's check the user's information. So let's see the get information about the user info. So if you see here, I'm going to use auth token, right? So after this, actually, I'm also save the user ID in the environment variable. So let's run this. So you see here response. Okay, tell me this is the guest user, right? Uh, I also can browse the folder. So let's try to browse the folder. Let's try to do a folder browsing. Um, I'm going to say get list of folders. Okay, this API, uh, this will use our token and project ID. So project ID is also in the environment variable. So this is, uh, uh, I don't remember which folder, probably, uh, yeah, project, this is a MacDrive tutorial project. So it will show all the folders in MacDrive tutorial project. So let's see uh, which the guest user can see. So this is a yeah, list of uh, all the folders the user has the privilege to. So that's the simple, uh, you can try other uh, scripts too, other, other uh, requests too. Uh, another way to use this is you can use this as a documentation. So if you go here, right, click the collection and you see at the bottom, right, there's a view collection documentation. You can actually use this as the documentation. 
So you can see all the documentation is what parameter you need to use and the examples, code examples, and some like piece of uh, JSON and code, right? You can actually show different code if you want to see this in Java, right? Okay, so I see you can see the code in Java. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty handy. Uh, that's another way to use it. Okay, so next I'm going to show you another collection. So in order to get another collection, I will go into this uh, um, public workspace as again. So I'm going to create a, a fork of this workspace uh, workflow collection. So I'm going to show you how to use this. So this served as the uh, use case, right? So each folder is the use case, and you can you can actually run each folder. You can you can click run each folder, and it will show you a sequence of execution, and it will have uh, you can see the response and request too. Okay, so let's create a fork of this. Um, I'm going to create a fork. I'm going to pause the video, and yeah, it will take about uh, two minutes. Um, Okay, yeah, make sure you check this. So you, if you check this, anything we change in the um, the, uh, the original collection, you will get a, you'll get a notification, right? You'll be able to update. Okay, so let's create a fork. I'm going to pause here. Okay, it's done. So now I have two collections, right? So now I'm going to uh, run it. So I'm going to select, okay, again, so this is in my private, uh, workspace. I'm going to select demo environment. So this time I'm going to just uh, select folder browsing. Okay, browsing folders, right? I'm going to click select the folder. So you see there are four scripts, right? Four requests, login, search for folder, and show the content of folder and log out. So logging, yeah, logging, search for a folder. Let's see the search for a folder. So when we search for a folder, we need to pass all token, which is created by the previous request. And uh, also project ID is saved in the environment variable. And also we save the folder ID, which is the first folder we saw. So it will save the folder, uh, first folder in this uh, variable. So this is a temporary and we will actually clean this out when we log out. So this will be removed after we log out. So this is just for uh, temporary to carry the contact information to the next request. Uh, we use this naming convention RD, uh, runtime data underscore something. So yeah, just the naming convention. And then we just show the content of the, the this folder, right? So if you see the parameter, this is a, a temporary variable. Okay. Then after this, yeah, you just check whether the request is successful or not. Okay. So let's click this folder. I'm going to see demo environment. I'm going to run, click run. Okay. Uh, before I click run, I'm going to also open the console. You see, so this console is empty. I'm going to save the response. If you want to see the response, you will see, you can check the response. Okay, run it. Now, so it will run this one by one, right? You see all the requests here, login, a result. This will show uh, type eight is a folder, folder type. It will search API. It will show all the folders. If you want to see the response, you'll see here, it's pretty big, right? So I'm going to close this. All right, so let's see. So it saved the folder, then it will get the first uh, for content of the first folder, and then it will close. The content of the first folder is like this. Okay, it will close. So this is a, um, <clears throat> this is a folder browsing. So next I'm going to show you uh, how to create a delayed folder. So since this is a demo um, environment with a guest or uh, anonymous user, so I don't have a permission. If I try to run this, you will see this will fail, All right? So, uh, in order to do this, I'm going to go to my environment, uh, public workspace. Uh, coming up, okay, let's see. Going to go to the Mac Regis SDK's public workspace, and you can actually bookmark this if you want to. Okay, so let's go to the environment. I'm going to create a fork of this template. So this is a template. I'm going to create a fork of this template. So I'm going to just change the base URL and put a login password. <clears throat> Okay, so this is my, uh, I'm gonna put it in the same one. Okay, same one and yeah, create a fork. Uh, this will be very quick, okay. Yeah, so then it opens my private workspace and here I have this environment. So I'm going to actually see this environment here. Okay, select this environment. So this is my environment. Base URL, I'm going to use this base URL actually, so I don't need to change. So if you have a, yeah, you, in your environment, you need to change this to your URL, okay? So if you create a 
uh, a cloud environment, the URL pattern will be very similar and you get a flocking password in email. So let's try to copy my password here. Okay, I'm going to copy my password. I'm going to use the standard authentication, which is fine. One is the standard authentication. I'll keep the rest. I don't have a, yeah, I'll keep the rest. Uh, save it. Okay, so save it. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to run the second collection. Okay, uh, folder browsing, right? So this will create and delete folder. So this time, okay, instead of uh, run this from the folder, I'm going to click one by one to show you. Um, so I'm going to first do logging. Okay, logging will create an auth token and right. So body has an username, password, and auth mode. So I'm going to click this. You'll see <coughs> result uh, header. Okay, we'll have a request header, response header. We'll have auth token somewhere here, right? Auth token. So this will be saved. Next, I'm going to call the search. I right? use, uh, yeah, so search. I'm going to just quickly run through. So you can see the search for the folder, right? So um, next, it will create a, actually save the folder ID. So the first folder ID we saw this folder. Um, so we're going to save this. Okay, we're going to save the folder ID. So in the next call, uh, I'm going to, uh, actually, I'm going to create a new folder. Uh, so if you look at the header, uh, project ID and auth token, uh, it's from environment variable and the parameter we also Actually, yeah, in the body, in the body, we have a parent folder ID. So this is the folder we saw before, right? So, so this script will carry over some context information for the next script. So let's run this. After running this, you will see a new folder, new folder is created and with some ID. This ID is also saved here, a right? new folder ID. So next I'm going to show you the content. So next script, we're going to show you the content of the uh, the old folder, the previous folder, since we just created one folder in this folder, we, we you should see the new folder uh, name, right? So let's run this. So here you see uh, this new folder, right? You see, this is a new folder we just created, right? So it is inserted into the parent folder. So let's go to the next request. Next request will show the content of the new folder. So let's see. Here it's empty because this is a new folder. We haven't inserted anything yet, okay? The so next request, we're going to e delete the new folder. So I'm going to call delete new folder and then if successful, I'm going to right click this log out, right? Log out. Okay. Then also clean up the environment variable. So this actually we also need to clean up the uh, new folder, right? So let's let's make a change here. Uh okay, so we're going to also unset the I think it's called a new folder ID. Uh just double check. Okay, save it and just double check. I want to create a new folder. We actually uh oops, not here. Uh, this is just to show the content. So it's here, uh, here, right? New folder ID. Okay. So this uh, new folder ID. So let's see. Uh, okay. So now, now let's try to run again. Okay. So this time I'm going to run from the folder. I am going to run from the folder. I'm click run and click see here. We're going to save the log. Okay. See. Open the console, clear the console. You see, uh, okay, let's see. Run this. You see, this is, uh, it will run one by one. And I think everything is successful. Uh, after you be finished, I think we don't, yeah, the other temporary variable will be removed. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's how to use this. You can actually uh, try other um, collections too. So we, uh, we organize this into a different uh, functionality, different use cases. You can search, you can search for the use case you want. Um, another thing I want to show you is how, how to contribute, right? Since I just made a small change, I want to contribute. So let's see. So I want to see, I want to um, merge this. Okay, I want to create a PR. So let's try. So because this is a fork from my uh, already uh, uh, the base collection, right? So it knows uh, uh, to check the difference. If you look at the difference, that's the only thing I added, right? So clean up this new folder ID. Okay, so now it tells me I need to move this to a public workspace. This is a private. So uh, I don't want to make this private. I don't want to make this workspace uh, public because I have some environment variable. I don't want to make this uh, public. So what I want to do is I want to move this to my temporary public uh, workspace uh, just for the PR. Okay, I'm going to move this to my temporary. 
uh, create a PR. <clears throat> so now uh, you see uh, this one should have a one collection and this is the PR. So I'm going to give a title says, uh, let's delete, okay. Remove a uh, new folder ID. Uh, remove temp uh, environment variable, okay, variable. Okay. Remove temp variable and give the description set. Uh, it, yeah, let's keep it simple. I'm going to create a PR. Okay, just for testing. So now I right, show me the diff and I'm going to say merge. Why is it not showing? Okay, oh yeah. So yeah, it's PI is already submitted and the owner of this repository will, will check. Okay, so that's how you can contribute. Um, yeah, so yeah. To summarize, in this video, we show you how to uh, start with the MicroEdge's REST API playground. We have a two work uh, collections. One is the REST API, the other one is the workflow. Uh, use API as documentation, and the other one used uh, as the tutorial for different workflows. And you can um, create a fork of the collection. You can create a fork of the environment and make some modifications. You can um, make changes and contribute to our public uh, workspace. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.